The Democratic Republic of Congo DRC, is the largest country in sub-Saharan Africa, with a surface area comparable to Western Europe. The Democratic Republic of Congo is rich in natural resources, including cobalt and copper, as well as hydropower potential, arable land, vast biodiversity, and the world's second largest rainforest. Before we proceed further welcome to Kwehu Media Africa. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And lastly do not forget to leave a comment below. The Democratic Republic of Congo boasts the world's third largest poor population. Poverty is widespread and pervasive in the DRC, and it is growing as a result of COVID-19's effects. In 2018, 73% of the Congolese population, or 60 million people, were expected to live on less than $1.90 a day, the international poverty rate. As a result, DRC is home to over 14% of individuals living in extreme poverty, or one out of every six people. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is the world's poorest country, with a nominal GDP per person of only 500 US dollars. 71% of the country's population lives in abject poverty, with no access to safe drinking water, education, medical care, or food. This is the world's highest rate of absolute poverty. Unfortunately, this was not always the case for this country. Previous to 1960, the Congo was a Belgian territory that was really progressing toward becoming a growing economy. In the 1950s, the Belgian Congo was Africa's second most industrialized country and was only a few points behind South Africa. This country, too, experienced many of the same societal difficulties as South Africa at the time. However, the country was becoming wealthier, and investments in businesses and infrastructure meant that everyone's quality of life was increasing. Furthermore, the Democratic Republic of the Congo rests atop a wealth of natural resources such as precious metals, diamonds, oil, and natural gas. So, where did it all go so horribly wrong? While it is difficult to say, there was no reason to suppose that the Democratic Republic of the Congo could not have progressed in the same way that so many other economies did from the 1960s onwards. The truth is that there is a very basic economic explanation why this country has fallen so far behind, but to fully understand this, we must first understand poverty. The Maslow hierarchy of requirements is a widely used model in social sciences. At the bottom of the hierarchy of wants is the demand for food, water, and shelter, which is not supplied by individuals in abject poverty. Above that is the need for safety, and above that is the need for more social needs, and so on, until the very top of the hierarchy we reach self-actualization wants, which are extremely lovely to have but arguably shouldn't be considered as needs at all. When someone lives in absolute poverty, it implies they live on less than $2.12 US a day. This is the form of poverty in which even the most basic human requirements are not met in even the most low-cost areas. Is this the kind of poverty that exists in the Democratic Republic of the Congo? A quick side note is that abject poverty, which you are more likely to hear about in the news, is the type of poverty caused by having financial means well below the cost of living in a particular area. This is the type of poverty that affects low-income earners in the United States, where the poverty line for an individual is a yearly income of 11,770 US dollars or less. In the Democratic Republic of the Congo, however, the same $11,000 income would make you a respected member of the 1%. Okay, so understanding poverty in terms of human needs is fascinating, if dismal, but what does this have to do with the DRC's economy? In the same way that a briefcase full of millions of dollars is quite useless stuck on a desert island without water, economies have fundamental needs that are very easy to rank in terms of significance. The most fundamental needs of an economy are stability and confidence. Given the lack of stability and confidence in the DRC, the country's natural riches are meaningless. At its most basic level, this is a diamond mine in Canada. It is a massive industrial facility that employs contemporary machinery and technology to extract these resources quickly and efficiently. Thousands of people are employed in high-paying jobs at mines like this, and the firms that run them make a lot of money, therefore they should contribute back the hundreds of millions of dollars that go into creating these facilities. 
In contrast, this is a diamond mine in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where no rational investor would ever put the same amount of money into a mine, because there is so little confidence that their investments would not be claimed by corruption and so much instability that having a mine stolen by any number of civil conflicts is a very real possibility. Because of this lack of investment workers are reduced to using hand tools and very basic machinery because of this lack of investment. This means that, despite the abundance of resources, they are not extracted as efficiently as a properly developed industrial mine and do not generate nearly as much money. The problem is exacerbated by the fact that the only groups willing and able to run and confidently hold these mines are military powers, who have frequently resorted to using child labor to extract these resources. But, needless to say, the proceeds from the sale of these crudely mined resources will not be used to create schools or infrastructure, but rather to buy guns and tanks, exacerbating the country's horrific violence. Is there any way out of this situation? In countries like the Democratic Republic of the Congo, foreign aid is a big deal. Organizations like the United Nations UNICEF, Doctors Without Borders, and even the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have major operations in the country. Could this foreign aid be the boost the Congolese economy needs to get back on track? Unfortunately, foreign aid is similar to life support, it keeps things going but it isn't meant to cure anything. Among the most commonly donated goods are clothing and food, which are typically donated by wealthy countries. This is a fantastic initiative that ensures that the Congolese people have the clothing and nutrition they require to survive in their country's harsh conditions, but it also means that any business that wants to sell clothes or food must comply with the regulations. Now, I hope that anyone viewing this channel has a rudimentary understanding of economics, enough to comprehend that competing with a zero-cost business in a country as impoverished as the DRC is simply not conceivable, despite what any politician would tell you. Small business is the backbone of any economy, and on the one hand, foreign aid has devastating effects on local business owners looking to ply their trade, on the other hand, it's a difficult decision to make to cut off aid knowing that it could result in tens of thousands of men, women, and children going hungry, so what's the solution? Fortunately, we know exactly what the remedy is. Unfortunately, the country's stability and confidence must be restored. We have no idea how to truly address the fact that conflict and corruption have essentially become a way of life for many people in the DRC, and as we have seen, this is a difficult cycle to break. However, there is good news, in 2019, 54 African countries agreed to establish the African Free Trade Zone. This means that all African countries will be allowed to trade freely and without limits with one another. This is a very similar format to the European Union. The significance of this agreement cannot be overstated, and it may serve as a catalyst. In order to achieve tremendous development throughout Africa, it should not be forgotten that Europe a century ago was ripe with wars, and that the European Union has provided the region's history's longest era of peace. If that achievement can be reproduced in Africa, it has a good chance of becoming the economic superpower it was always meant to be, lifting hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. If you love similar content like this, check out my other videos and if you like it smash the like button and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. See you in the next video.